Now, one of the key criticisms and challenges of case studies is to make the research generalizable, applicable to other situations. Now, one of the misconceptions around case studies is that it needs to be statistically generalizable, as we would see in terms of quantitative research, where we have some form of proof, um, some sort of theoretical um, analysis that's done on the statistical data that demonstrates generalizability. Now, that is not achievable by case studies, at least small numbers of case studies or single case studies. Um, if we had enough case studies, then yes, we could start applying statistical measures. But that is not generally how case studies are utilized. But what we do have, as opposed to analytical, um, sorry, statistical case studies, we've got the opportunity to provide analytical analysis. So with an, an analytical approach, we still collect data, we still form propositions, but then we make a, a structured formal argument as to why things have occurred based upon the data that is evident. Now, it's not statistical, but it's not doesn't need to be. If the argument can be strong enough and based upon data, then in another situation where similar events are occurring and similar data is evident, similar effects are um, being shown, then if our argument holds true in terms of its generalizability, then the same things should happen in that circumstance. So it does rely much more upon a structured argument versus a statistical treatment, as we find in other research methods. But it is no less valid as a result of that process. Now, I've given you a paper to look at, uh, the four steps of analysis, data from a case study method, um, which utilizes an analytical approach to analysis. Look at that paper, and we will discuss that and the analytical approach to analyzing case studies in the tutorial.